Hello, how is everyone this afternoon, or evening, or day, wherever the heck you might be in whatever your time zone is? Uh, so today, I went and probably spent a little bit more money than what I should have on a new pipe, and I just wanted to share that with you, I guess. Maybe I'm weird, because um, I'm tickled pink about it. It's been a while since I've gotten a new pipe, so let me preface this this video for a second. Um, I've been smoking almost three years, roughly. Uh, no one in my family or no one I know smokes a pipe, and I originally got into it because I'm a turbo nerd and things like Lord of the Rings and stuff like that really resonates with me, and of course a lot of the characters in these, in these uh, books and movies um, smoke a pipe. And pretty much anyone badass in the world you've ever heard of smokes a pipe. Uh, I think I listed in one of my other videos a, a pretty good list of fictional and non-fictional characters that smoke pipes. So, when I went, I told the gentleman who owns the brick and mortar store near where I live that I was, you know, I, was, I didn't know anything about what I was doing. I wanted to get into the, the hobby, the art. Um if you had any basket pipes available, and of course they had basket pipes, and if you're a new pipe smoker, basket pipes are pipes that are cheaper, they're generally a little bit lower in quality, but any pipe, don't let money be a deterrent, okay? You can get a $20 corn cob pipe and it'll smoke just fine. I, I even have one, uh, like this guy here, I've been using this for the past four or five months here and there um, to smoke my non-aromatics out of just because the other briar pipe I have um, is I designate that for my aromatic tobacco blends but this guy right here was like eighteen dollars and it did fine um, it's obviously cheaper things like where the uh, the the stem fits down in here and stuff is, is, a, is a little bit low, less quality but it still gets the job done just fine six months in still doing great um, and my other pipe I have, this I also mentioned in another one of my videos, is higher quality. And this is the pipe that the gentleman at the store pointed me towards, um, or at least the brand anyways. He, he said there's nothing wrong with getting a basket pipe, especially if you don't know whether you're going to enjoy it, but for about $20 more, this pipe at the time that I bought it was $40. Um, I think they've bumped up the price to $50 now. Uh, I'd have to double check. Um, and he said, you're going to get a much better smoke out of it. It's higher quality. And he was right. The company is Faro, F-E dot R-O. It's an Italian company. And it's Briar. It's really nice. Um, but I still wanted, you know, as I got more into the hobby, I wanted a, a higher quality pipe for my non aromatic tobacco blends and that is what I went and bought today okay and so um, let me also say that any company or person or hell any any other thing that's not me that I reference in this video I'm not being paid by them they're not you know giving me any sort of incentive to advertise their product or whatever it is that they're trying to sell. Um, these are people and companies I just like a lot. Uh, and if you are part of the YouTube pipe community, you may have watched some videos by a gentleman known as Mutton Chop Piper, like Mutton Chops. This gentleman is fantastic. He's essentially who I learned how to smoke a pipe from. Um, aside from reading, uh, I watched a lot of his videos and he was very, he's fantastic. If you haven't seen any of his videos, go watch him. Taught me everything I needed to know to get me going and more. He is a well fount of knowledge and he's, he's a really cool guy. Um, so shout out to that dude. Also, one of his favorite brands of pipes that he smoke is a company called Savinelli. And they are also an Italian company that produces briar pipes. And that is the brand of pipe I bought today. This pipe here was about, it was $85. I think it came out 90 with tax. Um, so it's not going to break the bank. More expensive than my other pipe, happy medium, really high quality. 
These are hand carved by craftsmen at the company. Um, carved as in they use lathes and stuff still. I mean, it's not like whittling, but they do it by hand as a st instead of it being like an automated uh, thing. Um, fantastic. I'm going to smoke this for the first time, and the tobacco I'm going to smoke here in just a minute is Orlick Dark Strong Kentucky, and I have my camera on my phone on like the reverse one like you would take a selfie with. I guess that's why the, the writing is funny, but this is a very good tobacco if you're transitioning from aromatics to non-aromatics. Now, with a name like this, Dark Strong Kentucky, you probably are thinking, dang, homie, that, that stuff's probably too lit for me. It's too strong. I like my aromatics. Well, this is actually really, really, uh, really mild. It's, it's not bad at all. It is a Virginia and... Uh, I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, hell. Uh, sorry, I can't remember the other. Maybe it says it on the back. It doesn't. Whatever. It's Virginia and this other type I'm forgetting. It's really common. Um, but it's cased in honey. And so it actually has a really sweet um, molasses, sugary taste to it, which I, I like a lot. It really tastes good. So um, this is one of the first tobaccos I tried while transitioning from the aromatic to non-aromatic tobaccos. I mean, I still smoke aromatics. I just wanted to, you know, broaden my horizons. Um, and it's really good, and that's what I'm going to be smoking for the first time. Not the tobacco, but this pipe. Pipe being smoked for the first time out of this. So it came with a really nice uh, suede leather case. I don't know if you can kind of see the texture on that. It says Savinelli on the front. You can tie it with, with the lacing. Really beautiful case, uh, which it's good to get something like this, especially if you're going to drop a little bit more money on a pipe. I mean, this came for free with it, but there's tons of companies out there that sell carrying cases or leather pouches for your pipes so you don't damage them or if you want to take them with you, which is really nice. But let's open this bad boy up. It kind of rolls up, and there's a pocket down in here. So this is the pipe and buddy I tell you it's kind of hard to see I guess through my camera the quality the craftsmanship is fantastic you can see the Savinelli inlay here um, has the company etched in and the model and all kinds of stuff on the side here this is some type of uh, bone inlay I'm not sure the exact material I'd have to look it up um, very nice bowl uh, it, the craftsmanship is just fantastic um, and a big thing I wanted with this pipe is I discovered that I am partial to the straight shape because I both clench and salivate a lot while smoking. And this kind of eliminates the tooth, you know. So I really, really like the shape. It feels good in the hand. The bowl size is perfect for me. I really like that just traditional wood coloring. Um, I know some of them can have... A little bit different colorings and you can get the uh, actual mouthpiece here and all kinds of it like from blue to anything you can think of um, and shout out to my local brick and mortar store it's called Milan Tobaccoists um, I have a card but it just show up backwards in the camera they're a small mom-and-pop shop out of Roanoke Virginia which is the city I live near and every time I've ever been in there they are just fantastic they're very polite always helped me out and I went in and I, and I told him the general characteristics of what I wanted in a pipe. I was like, it'd be nice if I can get Savinelli. I'm not completely determined to get that. Um, I want a straight billiard shape. That's the shape of the bowl and it's also straight. Uh, I was looking originally for a rusticated pipe because this is going to be my carry around pipe. Um, and I just kind of feel it's a little bit safer to do so if you have rusticated. I mean, if you have a pouch with this happen to come with, you don't have to worry about the sides getting nicked. But just keep that in mind. This is a smooth finish pipe, which is very nice. You just got to be mindful of where you lay it down and things like that. Um, but that they they had pulled a couple. They, they had a straight rusticated, but it was uh, the pot shape. And if you're not familiar, it's probably a little bit wider and, and a little bit fatter. Looks like a witch's cauldron, kind of. Um, which looked nice, but 
I really like this the the, the billiard shape. Um, and I was like, uh, you know, no, I'm not sure. And then the gentleman had pulled this one out. He's like, I know you're not looking for rusticated, but take a look at this pipe. It's really nice. It's by Savinelli, and this is the one I got. It's I am very excited to finally try out not only Savinelli but um, a pipe of this quality. This will be the the most expensive and high quality pipe I have ever smoked out of. Um, and I know some people up there have mad fliff to just drop on these dope dope ass pipes. Uh, I don't, so I wanted to keep it between the seventy and hundred dollar range. You can get a really solid pipe like this one for that much. Um, I'm not sure the actual measurements of the uh, the bowl and how deep th deep it is and the diameter and the overall length. I can put those in uh, the description of the video if people care. I mean, they probably don't. Um, but let's get to it. So, if you've ever smoked Orlick Dark Strong Kentucky, it's what's called a flake tobacco. And that refers to the, uh, the cut of it. And I'll show it to you here. This is flake tobacco. And there's tons of different cuts. You can get everything from ribbon to plug tobacco. Ribbon cut's probably what most people um, are familiar with when it comes to tobacco. Let me show you. Da -da 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 -da. So this is ribbon. It's, um, you know, caught, cut real thin and in little strips like that. And, uh... A little bit easier to deal with, burns easier, um, but the advantage, a big advantage of and why flake tobacco was invented, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, it was invented by sailors. I'm not sure of the time period, but the purpose is it holds in moisture, and so these sailors, when they were out on their voyages and stuff for months and months and months at a time, ribbon tobacco would lose its moisture. and Pipe tobacco needs a certain amount of moisture because it can affect the taste. Um, and so the solution was they pressed it. They pressed it really tight. I'm not sure the exact process. I'm sure there's videos out there you can look up. But they pressed it and condensed it. And so it's this, this kind of flake chunk here. And we can see the Virginia tobacco in the middle. And for the life of me, I still can't remember the name of the other tobacco uh, lining the sides. God, what is it? Uh, it's what most cigarette tobacco I'm thinking of is made from. Um, oh well, anyways. But there's more than one way to skin a cat. And as opposed to ribbon tobacco, I mean, you, can, you can't just really stick the flake down in your bowl. Uh, a lot of people either do the, they fold it. They'll fold it like this, kind of scrunch it up in their fingers a bit and stick it down in there. And what I like to do is I actually like to rub it out. So I'll fold it up, and I'm going to rub it out here a little bit. Uh, give me, bear with me. And what this is going to do, and I'll show you here in a second, breaking it up like this kind of makes it like a ribbon cut tobacco. It's easier to pack, um, burns easier. Okay, here we go. See, I've broken it up. Now I can put it in my pipe. So let's load this bad boy up and test it out. And I don't know, like I just said about putting the tobacco in, um, there's more than one way to pack a bowl. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Um, the method I favor, I think, is probably the most common. Um, and what they'll tell you is you'll sprinkle the, the tobacco into the bowl until it reaches the lip. The first time you, you press down in there, you do with the strength 
that you would shake the hands with of a baby. How hard you would shake a baby's hand. The second one you put down in there is how hard you would shake a woman's hand. And then the third pinch of tobacco you put down in there is how hard you would shake a man's hand. Now it's not literally that hard, but it's kind of to give you an idea of how hard you should be pushing down in there. And I'm by no means a um, master, uh, but it takes years and years and years to, to pack a bowl perfectly, and I still feel like even people who have been smoking all their lives still probably have the occasional time where they don't pack it correctly. Um, so, we've packed our tobacco into our pipe. Let's try it out. For you new pipe smokers, your first light is what's called your charring light. And what that does is it chars the tobacco at the top of the bowl and it allows it to carry down through the rest of your tobacco easily. Um, so it'll burn evenly on the way down. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is smooth. Man, that is nice. Um, just the draw on this thing. wonderful I would highly recommend this um, tobacco is delicious if you haven't tried it this pipe is the tits uh, fantastic couldn't be more happier with this purchase um, man that's good really nice quality pipe well, thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, have a good night. I'm going to sit here and enjoy the rest of this bowl.